Hey developers, so today we have something cool. We are gonna look at cleaner code, how you can be a better developer, and just some common tips that you should know as a web developer. All right, and my name is Eric, so let's go ahead and begin now. So let's take a look. So first, we're gonna talk about five cleaner code rules, and since you guys joined today, I'm going to give you a brand new bonus, but you have to stay to the end of the video, so make sure you watch the video from now to the end. Also, during the video, if you disagree with any of these tips or if you have some more tips, leave a comment below. I love to see them. Uh, it makes me happy. I really appreciate it. Okay, so here is the first one that I see all the time is to remove comments. So this is a really good piece of advice, especially if you're working in a code base and you see whole sections of code commented out. I, th I see this all the time and I'm always like, why are you commenting out all the code? Why not delete out the code? And then if someone wants to look at it later, make sure it's in a version control system like GitHub or Git or SVN or Perforce or something. That way people can always look through the history of the file and then find the code that you deleted out. So that makes more sense than leaving the code in there and just have it all commented out. So I see that a lot, especially in older code bases. So first tip is to make sure you just remove comments, remove co basically remove big blocks of comments that aren't needed any, any longer. It's also a good idea to delete comments that aren't really needed or older comments. As you refactor code and you add new features, updates, if you see comments that don't make sense anymore, feel free to delete them. And a little controversial, I really don't think you need comments at all inside your code base as long as you have good functional tests, which we'll talk about later, and that you write your code in a way that makes sense. You really don't have to have comments everywhere. And uh, this is something I see a lot of junior developers do. They come out of uh, class or boot camp, and they think they need to put comments everywhere. It's really not needed. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean you don't, it doesn't mean you should never do it, but I think most of the time it's really not needed. So keep that in mind. Oh, and it mentions a MacBook here. You don't need one of these. An old PC should work fine. Uh, so sometimes, uh, you know, I, I've seen advice too with people having to have a, a MacBook. A PC works fine. I just added that in there just as a little Easter egg for you guys. Before we go into the next tip, let's have a quick word from Dot Tech Domains. Do you guys want to win some really cool prizes during this holiday season? Well, I bet you do. From our friends from Dot Tech Domains, they created this really cool app. It's called Break the Code. It's 100% free. This is absolutely free. And it's basically a quiz game, a set of challenges. And if you win, you can win a whole bunch of really cool things. The grand prize is a $5,000 gaming rig, but you can win $100 Amazon vouchers, PlayStation 5s, iPads, MacBook Pros. It's pretty cool. I actually went through a few of the questions and they are really cool, like technical questions. They're actually great for developers or if you're looking to be a developer. So check this out, it's Break the Code. I'll put a link in the description. Make sure you click on that link. I'll also put it in the comments. So check it out, Break the Code. It's a really cool, fun game. It's 100% free. And it's just a way for dot .tech domains to give back to the community. So I thought this was really cool. So yeah, check it out. All right, so the next slide is don't repeat yourself. So do not repeat yourself. This is a really common advice that I hear all the time. And I just want to reiterate it, even though you've probably heard it before. It's just, you don't want to write something twice. And uh, if you end up having to write something over and over again, that is really likely it's a code smell. So a code smell is something where, you know, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right because you're doing something wrong. So obviously the best way of handling code that repeats itself all the time is to put it inside its own function or method or abstract it out into its own library or service, depending on what kind of technology you're using or what kind of programming language. But there should be a way that you can encapsulate the information that you're repeating over and over again into one place that you can then reference over and over again. You know, back in the day when I was starting to program, we used basic and basic had these go to's everywhere. And you ended up having weird like spaghetti logic where you would go to line 932 and then you would go to line uh, 325 and then code would like interfere with each other. So obviously we've thrown that paradigm out the window and now we have these nice methods and functions 
and classes where we can put information in, we can reuse it in multiple places. So please don't go back to the old ways of just having uh, one ginormous piece of code that you copy and paste over and over again. So don't don't copy and paste. Now, I will say there is one instance you may want to copy and paste, and that is like if you have some boilerplate code that just has to be in there. Like for example, if you're writing tests and you like to have you format your tests in a certain way, it's okay to like copy and paste from one place to the other. That might be an exception. But if you're actually copy and pasting logic inside each one of those tests that you should have abstracted out to like a before each or, or somewhere you can abstract out, then then you should do that. So don't copy and paste that. So learn to write less. Naming conventions. This is something I see all the time, especially with junior developers. They have the worst naming conventions, and I have been guilty of this before, naming variables variable or naming a constant like one or two or three. So uh, obviously, first thing is just put a little thought into how you're naming things. And a good thing is in modern web development, if you're working or even full full stack development, web development, most technologies have style guides in place that give you uh, an idea of what the naming conventions is. So if you're, for example, creating a Java project, you probably should go look up what the standard is for naming in Java. Should you have uppercase classes or lowercase classes? You know, is it is it nice? Is it good to kebab case or or hyphenate or or what whatever there it is? You should look at the standards and try to make sure you write your code that way. It's also uh, a good idea to to if you're in a company, write a style guide of some kind, so that way other people who come in to the company understand what they should expect. You can also even add this into some linting rules and things like that. So make sure that you do that. Just have a common uh, naming convention for everything. And uh, I think sometimes things that are simple are the best way to go. So make readable code. This sounds obvious, but I've seen this over and over again where you have this terrible spaghetti code or code that has these very crazy one-liners that you don't understand. So there's a difference between being clever and then making something readable and usable. So oftentimes I know that I can take any piece of code and make it into a, a one-liner using uh, you know, reduce and filters and maps and, and just have this one really clean line. But I know that a lot of developers uh, may not understand that off the top of their heads when they look at it. So I might break it down, make it into multiple pieces. So it's a little bit more readable and, and easier to, to get through. So always just think about the next person that will have to deal with your code because that's really important because you don't want to create something and have the next person be completely lost when going through your code because that is really annoying and people don't like to have to deal with that. And as you go through code, I always like the idea of, I don't know if it's a Boy Scout rule, is that you should leave your code nicer than when you, uh, when you arrive. So if you arrive into a code base and or you have to make an update to a function, you should do a little bit of housekeeping while you're there. Obviously don't rewrite it all, but if you can and you see some obvious problems, fix it up, put your code in, insert it in, and then leave it. Leave it. That way it's a little bit nicer than what it was, but not to the point you're gonna refactor everything. You don't wanna spend hours and hours in every single uh, time you touch a, a function because you have to rewrite everything, but leave it a little bit nicer if you can and and enjoy that like for example if you see they're using vars everywhere you know use const or lets or if they're supposed to be a const and they're using a let maybe change it to uh you know change it to the right one um change it to a const if it's not going to change so things like that just make the code base a little bit nicer and, and easier to work with so test your code this is uh once again an obvious one but i like to say people don't test your code i have been definitely guilty of this in the past but if if nothing else do this after you write your code manually test it yes that is that shouldn't be uh, that shouldn't be controversial but you can see how many times if you're going super fast developers write code they say yeah yeah it works and they don't actually thoroughly test it so manual testing is like the 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 very minimum amount of thing you should do after writing code now the better thing to do is to write and to end t tests cases uh unit tests, some sort of testing. Now, depending on the company you're, you're at, they may have different standards. Some require 
a certain level of unit tests for every piece of code you write. Some require you to write full integration or end-to-end -end tests, but make sure you're at least doing some sort of automated test. And at the minimum that you're testing manually your code after you write it, because you cannot imagine how many times I've done PRs or I've gone into someone's code and they've never even like ran it or tested it. And when I try to run it or test it during my code review, it doesn't work at all. So I always like, what happened here? And I've been guilty of it too. It sometimes happens, but it, it shouldn't happen too often. So here is the bonus. So keep functions small. And there's the idea of SRP, which is the single responsibility principle. So there's a whole clean code book, by the way. I didn't grab these from that. There's, there's whole books written on how to write better code. And I didn't want to get into some of the specifics of that. But this is a nice one to, to keep in mind that once you're creating functions, create the ones that are, uh, that class or functions in computer programs should have responsibility over a single part of the program's functionality, which it should encapsulate. So this idea is that you if you write small methods or modules or functions that do one thing, it's a lot easier to reuse that throughout the app. It's a lot more readable and maintainable, and it should make a lot more sense to people and you can reuse that in a lot of different places and should have kind of that one idea of what it should take care of. So it's okay to have break up your app into multiple smaller pieces, multiple functions. That way you have definitely a single responsibility for each one. So keep that in mind when you're writing code. If there's if your functions become extremely large, you they may be doing too many things. You may need to break them down into smaller pieces and they can be reused in different places after that, or it just makes more sense to break them down. And they'll be easier to test too, honestly. It's really hard to test a function that's hundreds of lines long that does 20 different things. It's much easier if you break that down into like 10 different functions that you can test. And don't worry about uh, line length or anything like that. As long as you can put them into small readable chunks, I think that's easier. So that's the some of the spirit behind single responsibility principle. For those of you who already know the clean code principles, leave a comment below. Let me know what other ones that you follow and you know, let me know. I'd love to hear. All right. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Leave a comment below, by the way. And also I put links in the description to some of my favorite courses. If you want to sign up for my mailing list to learn more about what I'm doing, I get I notify you when I have new courses out. I also notify you occasionally when I have new videos out. So it's a good way to keep in touch with me. And then uh, yeah, thanks. Take care. Goofy says thanks. <laughs>